how much therapeutic light are you really getting from your red light therapy device? Well, I did some testing and the results are gonna shock you. I myself was quite surprised and it is gonna shape future reviews and even how I use my red light therapy panels. And at the end of this video, I will share some practical solutions and takeaways to help you get the most from your red light therapy panel. So when you're shopping for a red light therapy panel, you often see features or specs such as treatment area, LED beam angle, or maybe you'll see a nice little graphic showing how a small panel emits all this light and saturates the whole body. But after doing my testing today, I can reveal that all of this is rather useless. So here's what I did. I took two red light therapy body panels. I took a red light rising advantage 1500 and a Mito red light Mito pro 1500. These are both large panels. The red light rising device has 500 LEDs. The Mito red light has 300 LEDs. So what I did is I used my spectrometer to test how much therapeutic light was being emitted from these panels at various distances. So I tested the center of the panel at six inches, then I moved the center back to 12 inches from the panel, then finally I moved it right back to 24 inches from the center of the panel. Once I had all those central peak figures, I then went back to six inches, and then I moved the sensor across the face of the panel. What I was looking for here was to determine what was happening to the light. How far out is that light being emitted? Is it only being emitted directly in front of the LEDs or is it penetrating out at an angle? And if it is at an angle, how much of that light is actually received on the outer edges of the panel? I did this at six inches, 12 inches, and then 24 inches. Then when I had all this data, I got out a whiteboard and I drew the outline of my body, the width of my shoulders, torso, head. It's nothing pretty, but it does the job. Then on top of this outline, I drew the shape and size of the LED panel. So you can get a rough idea of how big or how small the panel is in relation to my body. Then finally, with all of this set up, I was able to plot the amount of energy, the amount of therapeutic red light that was being emitted onto my body at various distances. If all of this sounds confusing, don't worry. Let's have a look at the results and I'm sure it will make sense. Okay, so here we have the red light rising. Uh, and I've plotted the figures for my six inch reading on my, uh, on my diagram here. So first up, uh, the red line is the width of the panel from the LED to the LED, okay? Uh, so we're gonna come in here so you can see this better. Now the width of my shoulder, 55 centimeters across. The width of the panel, the outside LED is um, 17 centimeters. Okay, so first up, these are readings at six inches from the panel. The peak readings were 60 milliwatt over centimeter squared. So this is our, our baseline, 100% intensity. Remember this was testing right in the middle of the panel. Now, as we come out towards the edge, the intensity or radiance dropped. In fact, we weren't even at the edge of the LEDs and we'd already dropped down to 48 milliwatts over centimeter squared, which was only 80% of the max. So you're not even on the edge of the panel and you're already getting a drop off, okay? By the time I got to the edge of the LEDs, this line here, I was at 50% the radiance, 30 milliwatts over centimeter squared, half of what we had in the center, which is quite surprising, okay? Now I wanted to find the 25% figure and we were only another inch or two off the edge of the LEDs. So that's your 15, 15 milliwatts. Remember, if you're using this figure as your dosing, that's what's you know, treating my sternum, uh, it's treating my, my belly button, my face. But then by the time you get to say your heart, you're only getting 25% of the irradiance, which is crazy. So you can look down here to see how this lines up, right? So that's your 25% figures. 25 is out here. So that body part is only getting 25% or a quarter of what the middle is getting. Crazy, huh? Okay, so now what I've done is set the panel six inches from the whiteboard. Let's turn it on. Okay, so it's not ideal here, but you can definitely see the concentration in the middle. That's your 100% intensity. By the time you get to that line there, 80%, this line here, we're down to 50%, uh, here 25, okay? So, does visually what you see here is is what we were seeing with the spectrometer as well uh remember this is only showing the red light it's not showing the near infrared light which is invisible okay so let's move out to 12 inches and we'll see what numbers we see okay so these are the 12 inch treatment figures uh the ones in green so in the center we had a 50 milliwatt reading um so that's a 100 baseline the 80 percent was actually a little bit closer than the 80 percent at six inches the 50% figure was a lot further out, so we're coming off the edge of the panel here, so that is 25 milliwatts, compared to say the 50% at six inches, which was pretty much on the edge of the LEDs, 
but that figure was was uh, 30 milliwatts, so a lot more. Uh, remember, the further away from the panel, the less power output, the less irradiance. Uh, and the 25 figure was way off the edge here. Um, well, not way off. I mean, it is it is wider than the 25 at six inches, but you're only getting 12 milliwatts over centimeter squared um, compared to you know the the 50 you're getting up here. So yes, you are getting a, a quite a wide area there at 12 inches. But the downside is it's only 12 milliwatts over centimeter squared, which is in what a quarter of what we're getting at six inches. Let's see what this looks like on the panel. Okay, so we have the panel set up at 12 inches here. Now, um, yeah, I mean, obviously it is a wider treatment area. It kind of does line up. You see that concentration in the middle dropping off around that 50%. By the time you get to 25%, it is a lot lower. So I also crunched some numbers for 24 inches. So let's plug them in and see how it looks. Okay, so now we have our 24 inch readings. These are the ones in blue. So remember we've got six inches, 12 inches, 24. The first thing to note is how much lower the radiance is. 28 compared to 50 compared to 60 when we're at six inches. So you're getting a lot less light here. Uh, what's interesting is the 80% figure is a lot wider. You can see it in the top of the screen there for the 12 inches. And the 50% is way out here. Uh, but of course you're only getting 14 milliwatts compare that to the other readings there's our 50 percent and there's our 50 percent and then finally the 25 percent reading is way out here on the edge of my torso this is only seven milliwatts over centimeter squared uh, the total width from one side to the other was 45 centimeters uh, remember my shoulder to shoulder width was 55 so i am getting a good coverage of light at 24 inches however the reading is very very low of course, you're not getting seven milliwatts right across. You're still going to get a higher figure in the middle. As you go further out, it drops off. But it does mean you are getting coverage, but I mean, it's really, really low. Hey, so if you're enjoying all this testing, please hit the like and subscribe button below. It does take me a lot of time making these videos. I've been working on this for most of the day and I've still got more to come, so, so don't run off just yet. But yeah, please hit those buttons below. I really do appreciate it. Okay, so that was the Red Light Rising 1500. Now, it's actually a, an older panel. My plan was to do this test for, you know, 10 or so panels, but literally it's taking me hours to do just this one. So what I'm going to do is one more panel test. I'll use the Mito Red Mito Pro 1500 because I've got it sitting right here. I'm going to go crunch all the numbers and then I'll just come back and share the insights with you. By the way, if you'd like me to do this test on another panel, you're going to have to ask very, very nicely because like I said, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of mucking around, measuring jotting numbers, uh, it's not the most enjoyable process. So let me know what panel you would like to test in the comments below and um, yeah, give me a pretty good reason. Okay, so the Mito Pro 1500 numbers are up. Uh, let's come in close, it is a little bit interesting. All right, so you can see the width of the panel uh, in relation to my body. This is a little bit wider than the 1500. Uh, it's only about a centimeter wider when you're measuring from LED to LED. Uh, I'm ignoring the metal case around it because obviously there's no light coming from that. Okay, so the other thing to keep in mind here is this panel is a lot more powerful than the uh, red light rising. So the black lines are all the six inch readings. Uh, we're up to 86 milliwatts over centimeter squared. So that is a lot higher than the red light rising. What's interesting though is the light is a lot more concentrated in the center. And this panel has a 60 degree beam angle, whereas the red light rising had a 30. So you'd expect it to be the opposite, but that is not the case. We're actually seeing tighter spacing. So we have the 80% figure here, 50% here, 25% here. So pretty much if you come down to this and you're standing six inches away, at six inches, the width of that LED to that LED on those outside widths, you're only getting 25% of the light, which in this case is about 20 milliwatts. When we come down to the 12 inch readings, now these figures are actually more in line with what the red light rising was putting out at six inches. But anyway, we're out at 12 inches now. Of course, we're seeing a wider spread, uh, 25 at six up there and 25 at 12 down here. So you're, you're, you're coming off the panel here, which is good. But really though, it's, I mean, you look at that in relation to my shoulder width. Yeah, not a lot. And then finally, we're down at 24 inches here. So the power is 40 milliwatts in the middle. 80% uh, figure there, 50% and 25 was off to the side of my body. But like we saw with the red light rising, very, very low, 10 milliwatts over centimeter squared. So really, if you had the Mito Pro 1500, which is quite a popular panel, and you're treating yourself at six inches and you want at least 50% treatment, well, I mean, really, you're going to need about four or five of them left to right. 
realistically though you're not going to do that uh, it's very expensive so even if you account for say like a 25 percent drop off that would be eight the 18 centimeters across there then you're still going to want maybe three one two three which is starting to get expensive especially if you want to do the lower half of the body okay so there's a lot to unpack here first up i have to share some limitations We've only used two panels. However, if you've seen my previous video where I did something similar to this, I tested a few more panels and they all had similar effects in terms of the light doesn't really go much beyond the width of the LEDs. So we can make the assumption that what we see here with these panels is gonna be the same with other panels. So I think it is fair to make the assumption that most red light therapy panels are gonna do exactly what we're gonna see here. You know what, I've just thought of something. The end of this year, I'm going to do another body panel comparison series. I've done two before, they're extremely popular, lots of work goes into it. I'm going to do this sort of testing for all of the panels I feature in that comparison series. It's going to be a lot of work, but I think it'll be worthwhile uh, to put out in that series. So yeah, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for that. Anyway, I have come up with a few key takeaways here. Firstly, I think beam angle is irrelevant. I noticed it didn't have any correlation with the light output in that previous video, and it's similar to what I've seen here. In theory, the mitre red panel has a larger beam angle than the red light rising, so you should see the light disperse a lot more, but we weren't seeing that. In fact, it was the opposite at the 6 inch range. Secondly, all of this shows how hard it is to come up with dosing protocols. I know I get questions all the time. There are so many variables. Uh, I've touched on it before. I will eventually do a video once I can wrap my head around it all. But if you're using a, a listed power reading, whether it's the manufacturer's, uh, a lab's, or my own, that's only true for one spot on the panel. Uh, how do you account for the high intensity you get in the middle, but less on the side? Like, I guess you have to work with averages, but even then it, it is very, very tricky. So that's the first thing to keep in mind. Secondly, it does show that if you want a true body treatment, you have to get a lot of panels or a larger panel, or you have to move that panel multiple times. I mean, if you're using a six inch distance from the panel, you've seen in those diagrams, you're really only getting a good treatment area, maybe this, the width of the LED, sometimes even less. So if you want that intensity across all areas of your body, you're gonna have to get a lot of panels or do a treatment on the left shoulder, the center, the right shoulder, the back, and you'll end up spending a lot of time, but hey, if that's what you want, that's what you'll need to do. Of course, the alternative is you move further back from the panel. The downside here is the power radiance drops off so much. And again, you're still gonna get more power in the middle than you would on the outside. You're not getting a true even blend of light. And of course, the further you are from the panel, the less radiance you get in, which means you need to stand there for longer. So what do you do? Do you stand closer and move every few minutes to treat different areas? Or do you stand further away and of course get a wider treatment area, but then of course you have to stand there for longer to make sure you get the adequate dose. I don't know what the right answer is. I guess it comes down to personal preference. And even then, there's still so many things we don't know. But what we do know is this stuff works. The science proves that it works. Anecdotal reports are through the roof. And really, if you still have doubts, Go get a cheap Huga health panel or something and just try it. Try it on that sore knee or that wound and see how quick you, you bounce back from it. What should I do from here? Well, obviously it would be cool to test more panels like this and that will be something I will do in the end of year comparison series. And I think I have to incorporate this somehow into my reviews because it is quite interesting. But of course, if you've watched this and thought of something that I should do or should test, please leave a comment below. And another thing that comes to mind after seeing this data is that actually those larger commercial professional panels with you know your 2000 leds they actually make quite a lot of sense now because you're gonna get a nice wide coverage of light there's no big gaps in the middle from the joints when you have to click multiple panels together and if they're designed properly you should get a nice concentration of light across a wide area you know like a foot or so which will treat the core of your body following up on that i also now think that hey maybe a bed is gonna work really well because you should get a nice even spread of light across both sides of the body and you don't have to move around or, or adjust panels. Of course, a bed does cost a lot and does take up a lot of space, so you still have those issues. But hey, if you're after an optimal spread of light, it is something to keep in mind. And one could go even further and say, maybe those low powered LED mats where you lie directly on them or, or wrap the body in them, maybe they also have a lot of benefit. Sure, they're not putting out near the amount of energy we're seeing in the large panels, but because they're so close to the skin and the LEDs are evenly spread, you should get quite an evenly spread amount of therapeutic red light. 
I'd have to do some testing to see actually how much light they are putting out because you may have to spend say an hour on one of them to match what you'd get in say 10 minutes with the panel. But still, it is something to factor in and it is something that I need to test further. So be sure to subscribe. In the meantime, I highly recommend checking out this video. This is a video from my 2021 comparison series where I do what I call hotspot testing. Effectively, I'm doing this exact test on 12 different panels, but simply using a visual aid. It's quite interesting to see how the light put from every panel was quite different.